My name is Christine Olivieri, your Paleo Practitioner. So the subject of today's video lesson is hormones. I like to educate my patients about hormones because many of the things that we're doing in our lifestyle today are disrupting our hormones. Whether it's the food that we're eating, or the fact that we gain weight, or the fact that we don't exercise. But a lot of these things are hormonally related. So whether you're a man or a woman, we all have fading hormones as we age. Through each decade, our growth and sex hormones decrease, as do our metabolism, which is the rate at which we burn calories. This will often cause weight gain, but it doesn't have to go down like that. Nature determines when our hormones will decline and how we feel about it. So I say, fight against nature. So first, let's talk about women. The slowing of our metabolism occurs with the approaching of menopause. Your metabolism is rather fast when you're in your 20s and your 30s. You can pretty much eat anything you want. But as a woman approaches the age of menopause, going into your 40s and then into your 50s, your metabolism will take a nosedive. Probably about half what it was when you were in your 20s and 30s. And how many people cut down their food intake to about half by the time they reach menopause? Very few, which is one of the main reasons for weight gain. Women will also experience an increase in their chances of having cardiovascular disease or diabetes as their estrogen decreases. You see, estrogen is a hormone that's very cardioprotective and will protect a woman from having a heart attack. It's not 100%, but it's very rare for a woman to have a heart attack before she reaches menopause. So estrogen is very cardioprotective, and once that's gone, the chances of a woman having a heart attack equals that of a man. The declining hormones will also result in obesity, fatigue, and insulin resistance. And abdominal fat, which is one of the parts of the body where fat easily accumulates, is an estrogen factory. That means that when you have estrogen after the age of menopause, this is not healthy and is actually a risk of breast cancer. Osteoporosis, depression, anxiety, all of the, these things are related to declining hormones, and body fat, and especially abdominal fat deposition. So don't succumb. Fight against nature. Eat a healthy paleo eating pattern. Exercise regularly. You don't have to kill yourself with exercise, but you do need to move more. And fight against abdominal fat. Let's talk to the men. There is a phenomenon of male menopause whatever that may mean. But we do know that men do have declining hormones, and for men that's testosterone, as they get older. And one of the main causes of that declining testosterone as a man ages, well, a small amount of it is just natural aging. But a huge amount of it is abdominal fat causing obesity, which causes insulin resistance, and then of course leads to diabetes. So for a, for a man, as he ages, that muscle-to-fat ratio is very important. A man must maintain a decent amount of muscle compared to fat as he ages to make a normal amount of testosterone. And as I said before, that abdominal fat is an estrogen factory. Whether you're male or female doesn't matter. So what does a man, as he approaches his 40s, 50s, and 60s and above, want more estrogen? It only competes for the testosterone. What's all the rage right now are what they call these low-T clinics across the country. A low-T clinic is a clinic where a man can go to have his testosterone checked and go on a testosterone supplement. This is not something that a man who's getting older wants to do. The only person, or the only man, who needs testosterone supplements is a man who has a condition called hypogonadism. Men are going to know that they have hypogonadism, probably going into puberty. 
And you're going to know it because puberty is delayed. So most people are going to require a visit to an endocrinologist. Hypogonadism can be an acquired condition if there's any injury to the testes. So be careful of low T clinics. A testosterone supplement is never an easy way to solve the problem. If the problem is low testosterone on a blood test, you must look to understand why is the testosterone low. For some men, they just have low testosterone as they age. Most men are going to have low testosterone because of too much belly fat production, which is an endocrine organ for estrogen and will compete with receptor sites for testosterone. And too often, the estrogen wins. But by supplementing with testosterone, often has a high rate of cardiovascular disease. This is what we're seeing now because so many men are going on testosterone supplements. So low T is often related to obesity, insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. It's also related to sleep apnea and cardiovascular disease. So treating erectile problems related to low testosterone is just treating a symptom. Low T is often cured with weight loss and control of blood sugar. The PPD-5s, which are, are the medications like Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, only enhance blood flow. They do not increase testosterone production. So let's talk now about thyroid hormone. Hypothyroidism, which is low production of thyroid hormone, is often caused by Hashimoto's thyroiditis. This is simply an autoimmune disease where your body starts attacking your thyroid gland. It can be sparked by a virus, but my, more often it is sparked by chronic low levels of inflammation, often related to weight. So when it is a, an autoimmune disease, losing weight reduces inflammation and reduces the chances of thyroiditis. But hypothyroidism is a condition in which your metabolism will slow. It can be treated with supplemental Synthroid, which is synthetic hormone for thyroid. But once it's treated and once your thyroid is now being tested to be in a normal range, it can no longer be, be blamed for your weight gain. Now hyperthyroidism speeds up your metabolism. So hyperthyroidism is a condition that does require a visit to an endocrinologist. Let's talk about cortisol. Early morning release of cortisol, which is a hormone that is related to belly fat, often causes high blood sugar in the morning. Weight loss is often the cure. And lastly, let's talk about ghrelin and leptin, which are the hunger and satiety hormones. These are the hormones that are related to causing you to feel hungry and causing you to feel full. And they're released in response to food hitting your stomach or your stomach being empty. But imbalances are caused by a large belly. And they will cause inappropriate release of these hormones, putting you in a state of more frequent hunger and very late satiety which will cause you to overeat because you will not feel full early enough in the meal. So I hope you have a better understanding now of the importance of hormones to somebody being healthy and to somebody losing weight and having control of your blood sugars.